With a price tag surpassing quadrillions of dollars per gram, this elusive material defies the laws of physics. It's also likely the most explosive substance on the planet. Michael Dozer, who works in the only factory making it, describes this reaction as probably the most violent process you can think of because the full mass of the object disappears and transforms into energy. So what exactly is this astonishing substance? Antimatter. Scientists' prediction places the cost of this incredibly expensive material at a staggering $62 trillion per gram, an amount that would take 100 billion years to amass. To put this number into perspective, the combined GDP of all countries on the planet is $91 trillion. Antimatter's exorbitant cost raises questions about its feasibility for practical applications. Surprisingly, it's neither gold nor a rare diamond. This substance known as antimatter is in a league of its own. Keep watching until the end of the video to learn why this substance is so expensive. It sounds too unbelievable to be true, but it does indeed exist, confirms Professor Dozer, a physicist researching antimatter at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. CERN, situated in Switzerland and renowned for the Large Hadron Collider, frequently unveils the universe's fundamental particles. Lesser known is its investigation into the universe's antiparticles. Professor Dozer heads a team at the captivatingly titled Antimatter Factory, where they produce and trap this peculiar, costly and volatile substance. But what exactly is antimatter? In 1930, Paul Dirac formulated a quantum theory for the motion of electrons in electric and magnetic fields, the first theory that correctly included Einstein's theory of special relativity in this context. This theory led to a surprising prediction. The equations that described the electron also described, and in fact required, the existence of another type of particle with exactly the same mass as the electron but with positive instead of negative electric charge. This particle, which is called the positron, is the antiparticle of the electron, and it was the first example of antimatter. Its discovery and experiments soon confirmed the remarkable prediction of antimatter in Dirac's theory. A cloud chamber picture taken by Carl D. Anderson in 1931 showed a particle entering from below and passing through a lead plate. The direction of the curvature of the path caused by a magnetic field indicated that the particle was a positively charged one but with the same mass and other characteristics as an electron. Experiments today routinely produce large numbers of positrons. New discoveries lead to new language. In coining the term antimatter, Physicists, in fact, redefined the meaning of the word matter. Until that time, matter meant anything with substance. Even today, school textbooks give this definition. Matter takes up space and has mass. By adding the concept of antimatter as distinct from matter, physicists narrowed the definition of matter to apply to only certain kinds of particles, including, however, all those found in everyday experience. Any pair of matching particle and antiparticle can be produced any time there is sufficient energy available to provide the necessary mass energy. When matter meets its malevolent antimatter counterpart, they annihilate each other, unleashing their stored energy. When a proton and antiproton collide, their mass vanishes entirely. This is unquestionably the most energetic process imaginable. When a gram of antimatter comes into contact with a gram of its corresponding matter, a cataclysmic event unfolds, releasing a staggering amount of energy, 4.184 multiply 1012 joules. To put this in perspective, the energy produced by this collision is approximately 40% of the energy released during the detonation of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. Scientists see this as a potential nearly limitless power source. But why don't we see antimatter particles flying around, creating fireworks? Scientists believe that during the Big Bang, equal amounts of matter and antimatter were created, but somehow matter came to dominate. This remains one of physics' biggest mysteries. Stick around until the end of the video to uncover the potential challenges antimatter can cause. Antimatter is incredibly fascinating and could revolutionize our understanding of the universe and provide a new energy source. 
Imagine fueling a spaceship to the far reaches of the galaxy or powering an entire city with a new kind of power plant. Discovering these particles wasn't easy. While most antimatter vanished after the Big Bang, there is some in space, though it's very rare. Scientists hunt for antimatter in space by searching for cosmic rays made of antimatter particles. They can also create antimatter in laboratories, as Michael Dozer is doing in Switzerland using a particle accelerator. Even a tiny amount of antimatter, like a couple of ounces, could provide the energy of burning millions of gallons of gasoline, enough to power a city for a year. This potential has scientists exploring ways to use antimatter for clean, infinite energy and to power spacecraft for interstellar travel. The production of antimatter is a fascinating and complex process that involves high energy physics and advanced technology. At the heart of this process is the concept of particle acceleration and collision, which allows scientists to create antimatter from ordinary matter. To create antimatter, scientists start with a proton, a positively charged subatomic particle found in the nucleus of an atom. Protons are abundant in nature, making them an ideal starting point for antimatter production. The next step is to accelerate the proton to incredibly high speeds. This acceleration is achieved using sophisticated particle accelerators, such as those found at CERN's antimatter factory. Once the proton is accelerated, it is directed towards a target, typically made of a heavy element like iridium. When the accelerated proton collides with the target, the high energy of the collision causes the proton to break apart, producing a variety of subatomic particles, including antiprotons. Antiprotons are the antimatter counterparts of protons with the same mass but opposite charge. The production of antimatter through proton-proton collisions is a probabilistic process. Not every collision will result in the creation of antimatter. In fact, only a small fraction of collisions will produce the desired antiprotons. This is why antimatter production is such an expensive and resource-intensive process. Despite the challenges and costs associated with antimatter production, it remains an important area of research for physicists. Antimatter has unique properties that make it a valuable tool for studying fundamental physics and the nature of the universe. It is also a key ingredient in certain medical imaging techniques, such as positron emission tomography, PET, highlighting the practical applications of this exotic form of matter. While the production of antimatter is currently limited to specialised research facilities, ongoing research in this field may one day lead to new insights into the nature of the universe and the development of novel technologies. The discovery of antimatter opens up a world of possibilities, but it also comes with its fair share of challenges. One big hurdle is figuring out how to produce and store antimatter. It's no easy task. It requires sophisticated particle accelerators and a ton of energy. And to make things trickier, antimatter is super unstable and annihilates when it touches regular matter, making storage and transportation a real puzzle. Despite these challenges, scientists are hopeful about the future of antimatter research. The discovery has reignited interest and funding in the field, pushing researchers to find more efficient ways to produce and handle antimatter. Breakthroughs in technology and physics could make it easier to produce and store antimatter, opening the door to practical applications. Looking ahead, antimatter could change the game in fields like energy production and space exploration. It could become a super efficient fuel source, packing way more energy than traditional fuels. This could lead to major advancements in spacecraft propulsion, making space travel faster and more efficient than ever before. At the moment of the Big Bang, all the energy of the universe was concentrated and exploded. According to Professor Dozer, there was an expectation that the universe would consist of equal amounts of matter and antimatter, given the abundance of energy at that time. However, the big surprise is that this is not the case. There is no antimatter left in the universe from the Big Bang that we're aware of, which is fortunate. If matter and antimatter had formed in equal parts, they would have annihilated each other, leading to a scenario where the universe might have been empty. The question then arises, why aren't there equal amounts of antimatter and matter in the universe? The best explanation so far is that there's a slight difference in the properties of particles and antiparticles. 
This slight imbalance, where one particle is left over out of a billion, accounts for everything we see in the universe, including galaxies, stars, planets, and ourselves. This theory suggests that we are the leftovers in this model. However, there are alternative hypotheses. One such hypothesis is that we're living in a part of the universe filled with matter, while other parts might be full of antimatter. This would imply the existence of antimatter planets, stars, or galaxies in those regions. If no difference is found between matter and antimatter, this hypothesis would become the only remaining explanation. To unravel this cosmic conundrum, researchers at CERN's antimatter factory are working to study antimatter. Despite their efforts, antimatter remains elusive, and no meaningful differences between matter and antimatter have been found so far. However, Professor Doza reassures that the quantities of antimatter produced and studied are so minor that they pose no significant risk, even if they were all destroyed. The discovery of antimatter not only represents a groundbreaking advancement in scientific knowledge, but also brings to light critical ethical and safety considerations. One of the primary concerns associated with antimatter is its potential weaponization due to its immense energy density. Mishandling antimatter could result in catastrophic consequences, prompting a need for responsible management and regulation. To address these concerns, strict regulatory measures have been put in place, including international agreements and organisations dedicated to monitoring and controlling antimatter research and production. These efforts aim to prevent misuser and ensure the safe handling of antimatter. Moreover, there are significant safety challenges related to the handling and storage of antimatter. Antimatter is highly reactive and can cause explosions when it comes into contact with regular matter, releasing a massive amount of energy. This necessitates the use of specialized facilities and strict protocols to ensure safe handling. Any error in handling could lead to severe consequences. To mitigate these risks, it is crucial to implement stringent safety rules and regulations governing the handling and storage of antimatter. This may require international cooperation and oversight to ensure that antimatter is used for peaceful and beneficial purposes. Despite these challenges, the discovery of antimatter signifies a monumental leap forward in scientific progress. Safeguarding against the misuse of antimatter is a paramount ethical and safety consideration in the world of scientific research. As we wrap up our exploration of antimatter, we find ourselves standing at the threshold of a realm where science fiction meets reality. The discovery of antimatter, the most expensive substance in the universe, has captivated our imaginations and propelled us into uncharted territory. From the mind-bending theories of Paul Dirac to the awe-inspiring experiments at CERN's antimatter factory, we've delved into the heart of this enigmatic substance. We've witnessed its potential to revolutionize energy production, space exploration, and even medical imaging. Yet, amid the excitement, we've encountered formidable challenges. The elusive nature of antimatter, its staggering cost, and the ethical dilemmas it presents remind us of the responsibility that comes with scientific advancement. As we contemplate the mysteries of the universe, why there's more matter than antimatter, the potential existence of antimatter galaxies, and the delicate balance of particles and antiparticles. We're reminded of the profound questions that drive scientific inquiry. But beyond the complexities lies a promise, a promise of boundless potential, of a future shaped by innovation and discovery. With careful stewardship and collaborative effort, we can harness the power of antimatter for the betterment of humanity. So, as we conclude our journey through the realms of antimatter, let us carry forward the spirit of curiosity, the commitment to responsible exploration, and the optimism for a brighter tomorrow. For in the vast expanse of the cosmos, there are still wonders waiting to be uncovered, and it is our collective endeavor to seek them out, one discovery at a time.